Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, for Boko Haram terrorists, the forests of Kaduna are better to operate in than Zambisa Forest. Uh, this, according to Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State, is what a released Abuja Kaduna train kidnap victim said. Now, this comes as the Kaduna State government has raised the alarm over the activities of terrorist groups in the state. Speaking during the presentation of the first quarter security report for 2022 to the state's Security Council, the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, said members of the Ansaru and Boko Haram terrorist groups have infiltrated some parts of Bernin, Gwari and Giwa local government areas. These are parts of Kaduna State. It was further revealed that those who attacked the Abuja Kaduna bound train, the ill fated train, were Boko Haram terrorists. Now, the Commissioner Aruan also said the terrorists have been luring locals with gifts with a view to recruiting them into the criminal organizations. Uh, Governor Erufai expressed concern that the terrorists are moving from the northeast to the northwest with the intention of causing havoc. Now, we have joining us this morning on The Breakfast to look at this latest development, Ambrose Igboke, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning to you, Ambrose Igboke. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. When you hear the terrorists are saying that they prefer the forests of Kaduna State to Zambisa Forest as a base to operate from, how does that make you feel and what thoughts go through your mind? Well, it sends uh, to any Nigerian, it will send shivers, it will send fear, it will send worry and discomfort to any well-meaning Nigeria to hear that kind of, uh, uh, you know, proclamation from a terrorist group like Boko Haram. Uh, before now, they have been operating in the, in the far north, which is in the fringes of the country, uh, the northeast, uh, with the boundary, you know, always uh, rotating between the Chad Basin, uh, going to uh, Niger, you know, coming out and all into the country, operating from there. I uh, remember there was a time they were controlled up to 17 local governments in uh, Borono State until the military were able to, you know, uh, uh, to take some of those uh, towns. Now, uh, in Kaduna State, Kaduna has been a hot, but they have been testing the ground. Remember the invasion of um, uh, the uh, NDA, Nigeria Defense Academy? Remember the attack on the airport, uh, and remember the attack on the residents uh, of the universities. And so they have been testing Kaduna for a while. Uh, Kaduna has been a hotbed in the name of religious crisis, in the name of ethnic uh, clashes. When the security was coming up, they were painting it as if it is a farmer's headers clash. Uh, and it was not. It was a, a bold attempt to make some statements. And uh, but the the, the uh, government of Kaduna State then uh, was was even said uh, there was a time the governor came out to say that uh, some of these uh, uh, people were even being paid to 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 leave the state. So when you don't take decisive step like that and you keep on pampering uh, uh, pampering the issue, then they become emboldened. When you pamper these terrorists, they become monsters, and that is what is happening now. So it is worrisome, and it is good that uh, the governor Erufai has raised the alarm. So it is left for the uh, authorities now to know what to do because Kaduna is a very large swath of land. It is huge. Southern Kaduna alone can form a big state. So Kaduna is huge. And when the terrorists say this kind of thing, they, they know what they are talking about because there are huge expanse of forests in between the towns and the rest. And then Kaduna is strategic. It's uh, in the northwest. But again, uh, Kaduna can always be said to be in the midst of north central states. Kaduna, the states that surround Kaduna basically are almost not central states. And so they are very close. It's close to Niger State. It's close to Abuja. It's close to Nasarawa State. It's close to Plateau State. And so these states are just, you know, if they can have a foothold in Kaduna, then the non-central states are not safe, and basically the rest of Nigeria. So this is time to take a very serious and decisive action to see how we can stem the tide and ensure that they don't take a hold in Kaduna Forest. Mm. So um, you are talking about decisive action. Now, what actions can be taken? Because uh, just like you have also affirmed, the, the government has been indulging by her actions and that has uh, really cost, you know, the state what it's currently faced with. Well, the best uh, the action, uh, many Nigerians, uh, including myself, are, are very confused on why 
uh, these people are emboldened the way they do and even uh, had the infantry to enter military formations, inside military formations, some of our formidable military formations to uh, kidnap, to cause havoc. And then, uh, basically, uh, we are not hearing anything about the ret uh, retribution of what they have done. So it, it makes us worry. It makes us um, puzzled that these kind of things are happening. So the uh, security attacks should be ramped up. Uh, there should be more concerted efforts since they have made no their, their next moves. It is it's behoving on the commander in chief and all the uh, heads of the agencies of security agencies to see how we can have what we call preventive uh, uh, strikes so that we don't just do what retaliation alone. We do preventive strikes. And then uh, there is a lot of complaints about issues of, uh, you know, uh, communities, in the, especially in the villages and hamlets, being left on their own. And, and this is why this issue of uh, when the governor said that they are, uh, you know, giving uh, the youths and some other people some uh, uh, inducements to join, uh, to join the fray is because of this kind of thing. So it is actually time to have a very strong language by, you know, mobilizing our military, all the military agencies and paramilitary agencies to come down and start convening the forest. I mean, we have just uh, some few months ago, we took delivery of some uh, military hardware from the United States of America. This is the time to deploy them. This is the time to use technology. Uh, the forests are not, uh, uh, the forests are not uh, in, in mass. They are not in Jupiter. They are in uh, Nigeria. And uh, surveillance equipment and surveillance uh, tools can be used to actually dig out where these people are. And that is what we should be deploying now to ensure that these people, their location is, uh, uh, you know, found out. And then there are precision technologies that can, you know, strike these people. And then let us have peace in uh, Kaduna so that uh, we don't embolden this mo uh, these people to come out in a monstrous way to attack uh, us. Hmm. What, what do you think? Because, I mean, they, whilst uh, there have been knocks for the Kaduna state governor in his approach in the past and suspicion of... Um, where he stands as far as um, the divide in the state is concerned. Um, you know, he has seemed to have taken a very hands-on approach in at least gathering the data and uh, having briefings and giving us updates on what's been happening in, in this last Security Council briefing. We had updates on the number of persons killed so far. Um, what, do you think, what do you think accounts for the seeming inability of the security apparatus in the country, uh, which has a lot of formations domiciled in Kaduna State to be able to address the situation. For Aerofy to be the one uh, through his commissioner to come out to reveal these things. Is there a failure, is this more, uh, a more evidence of a failure of intelligence gathering? And w what, what exactly is going on? Why are these guys seeming, why do they seem to be expanding their territory and inching closer to Abuja unabated? Well, one of the things that had always uh, at the beginning was that it was being treated with levity. Um, when people talk, they see it as an attack on government. The other time, it was uh, it was polit most of the time it was politicized, especially at the beginning, and they were seeing it as if it was just uh, uh, later it was ethnic. It was seen as um, uh, an attack on Southern Kaduna, and basically it was the Southern Kaduna part that was being attacked alone for a very 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 long time. So the Southern Karuna people were left as victims, and there was no there was no concrete action actually taken. And we, we were warning that time that this thing, if it is not arrested, will escalate. Because when they finish dealing with Southern Karuna, they will continue dealing with the rest. And these people have been having strikes in the community. Last time, they entered a very, very big town in Kaduna uh, called Kaguru. They were inside the town, just like last month. And this, so these people are becoming more emboldened. They are coming out more, you know, in a, in a very... Uh, monstrous manner, attacking towns, even giving information. These people are giving information. The locals are saying that they will give information and time that they are coming. So if these people have that emboldening, the question you're asking is also the question I'm asking. What are the security agencies doing? That is the question I don't have an answer to. Perhaps we can direct the questions to the heads of the security formations and the commander-in-chief himself. That these people have the temerity to even give uh, 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 advance notice that they are coming to a place. The last last month they came to Kagoro Town. They gave they gave information that they are coming, and they came. So uh, we, ha we there is something that we Nigerians do not understand because I will reiterate and keep reiterating: the Nigerian military has the capacity 
to decimate these people. And I trust the Nigerian military, I trust their capacity, I trust their might, and I trust uh, their technical ability to defeat these people. Why is not happening? I don't have answer to that question. But some people have actually argued differently that, you know, capacity might just be the problem, uh, looking at the manpower, even though others would say that there might just be a compromise. We've seen situations where you have, um, you know, prominent persons, heads, commanders, compromising it's it's in public space uh, the, these are possible i know that you have said that you're not in the know but it's a possible um you know argument why we don't and other people are saying that it just goes beyond that maybe you know the government is overwhelmed by all of this i i don't believe the government is overwhelmed i say we maintain my stand that the nigerian military has the capacity to decimate these people what we start probing why it's not happening but I am not in doubt that the Nigerian military has the capability and the capacity to decimate these terrorists. All right. Um, uh, before we go, what would you say uh, should be the approach of uh, the authorities to, to handle this? Should the Kaduna state government, uh, are they capable of taking the bull by the horns and grabbing this by, uh, well, let me not use another word, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to, to solve the situation um, as a state government, maybe enlisting local vigilantes, or do you think that the federal government should adopt a different approach? You've talked about, you know, the, uh, the, the equipment acquired recently. We have the Super Tucano jets. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amici, had recently said, you know, former Minister of Transportation, um, that uh, the resumption of the train services will, on May 23 will have a security in the form of um, the Nigerian Air Force, you know, sweeping the rail route. And if you see any um, unwanted person on that route, they would fire on that person. What approach should be taken, you know, to solve this, this crisis in Kaduna State, which is so close to the seat of power in Abuja, worryingly close with all that's happening right now? The governor of Kaduna State is not the person in charge of uh, the security agencies. He has raised the alarm. He has uh, made the world know. He has cried out that this is what is happening. Um, good enough, uh, Erofi, Governor Erofi is very close to uh, the presidency. So this is the time to use his good relationship with the presidency to see what further commitments he can get from the president and commander in chief to be able to deploy a more tactical approach to you know solving this issue because it is a um, it is a very very worrisome development so what we what we can do is if the military can now you know start what we call targeted uh, uh targeted surveillance as uh, as they have said but again the issue is that after the surveillance after intelligence gathering what do you do with it that is the question Nigerians are asking. What do you do with this surveillance? What do you do with the intelligence you have gathered? What do you do with the equipment in, uh, in your, at your disposal? What do you do with all this? So it is time for Nigerians to expect actions. It's time for Nigerians to see that the military is coming with its full might, the might that I believe it has. And then we can now see actions being taken place. And we can now also, as the governor of... Uh, of uh, Cardona uh, uh, State to see also how you can wrap up local uh, intels like the vigilante. Like for example, why will people? It's the local intel. Local intels have said that they, they report these things to the to the security agencies. They come out and say these people write them letters. These people inform them that they are coming. They send messages to them. When these messages are relayed to the security agency, what do they do with it? What do they do with them? And that is what we are asking. So when it, such local intels are gathered. It is left for the governor to now mobilize by, you know, connecting with the heads of the security agencies and even the presidency to start nipping these things on the board. Because where it is allowed to happen most of the time, it emboldens the terrorists and they come out more in their droves. But when it is nipped in the board and they're decimated, then of course they will retreat and then we can have some peace. All right, thank you very much. It's quite interesting uh, uh, contribution and, of course, analysis from you. We very much appreciate your time and for joining us on the program this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, we pray for better days as far as security. Kaduna State is concerned, uh, strategic state uh, as far as Nigeria's security structure and apparatus 
uh, is concerned. And also in terms of location, Mercy, it is proximity to, to Abuja, the seat of power, uh, which is the federal capital territory. We hope for the best. But Ambrose Iboke was our guest. He's a public affairs analyst, and he joined us on the first segment of our discussion on breakfast. All right, so let's take a break. When we return, we definitely bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds in terms of sports. Stay with us. <laughs>